So now we've learned how to generate random numbers with our computer and now we want to figure out how these random numbers that we're going to generate uh, combine with each other. And that's the next step in our path uh, towards generating random, randomized procedural content in our game. So we're going to take a look now at what is the probability of two dice both rolling a one. I'm not going to draw the whole dice in 3D this time because um, that just takes too long. But the key here is understanding that both of these die rolling a one are independent events. independent events. And that means that the outcome of both of these events, that is the, out, the, the outcome that each die will roll a one, is going to be independent of the other die. Okay, so this die rolling a one doesn't affect what this die is gonna roll, and the second die rolling a one doesn't affect what the first die is gonna roll. So all the probabilities that we're gonna calculate today depend on both of these events being independent of each other, meaning that they don't affect each other. So what is the probability that we're going to roll two ones? Well, because they're independent, we can break them down into the individual events. What is the probability the first die is going to roll one? Well, we have one outcome that we're interested in, and there are six total outcomes since there are six sides in the die. So that's one sixth. And then the same with the second die. There's one outcome we're interested in, and there are six total outcomes and because they're independent we can just multiply these two together and we get one out of 36. One out of th 36 makes sense because out of all 36 possibilities we have only one that is snake eyes. That is both die give us a one and so one out of 36 is the probability we want. So that suggests a general formula for the probability of two events A and B happening when these two events are independent. And this notation right here is intersection. It means intersection. Intersection meaning that we have the probability of A and B happening at the same time. The events must intersect. I don't know if that's a terribly intuitive explanation of intersection, but that's the best you're getting for now. So this is gonna be equal to the probability of the first one times the probability of the second one. So let's get a more complicated example. Let's suppose we want, we have two die, okay? And the second one has to be a one, but the first one can be a one or a two or a three okay now these again are independent events the outcome of the first die doesn't affect the second and vice versa so we can just figure out what these probabilities are separately and multiply them there are six total 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 there are six total outcomes here and six total outcomes there we are interested in three of the possible outcomes because we're interested in one, two, and three happening. Four, five, and six, we don't care about. So we'll put a three right there. But we're only interested in one possible outcome here. So multiplying these fractions, I get three times one is three, and six times six is 36. So that is gonna be equal to one out of 12 after we simplify. And so the probability of the first die being one, two, or three, and the second die being a one is one out of 12. Easy. So now let's draw a line here because we're about to do something slightly different. Up until now, we've been looking at the, pro the probabilities of and events, okay? That being that both things have to happen. This die has to roll a one and that die has to roll a one. But now we are going to look at or events. Or. So we're gonna figure out what is the probability of this die rolling a one 
or the second die rolling a one. So they don't have to both roll a one as long as only one of the two rolls a one, then we're gravy. So let's break this down. Okay, if the outcome is a one and a one, then that's good, we want that. Both die are, are one, that's fine. If the outcome is a one and a two, in other words, the first die is one and the second die is two, then that's fine as well. One and three, that's cool. One and four, that's fine. One and five, that's all right. One and six. All of these are acceptable results as long as one of the die rolls a one. And then let's take a look and see what happens if the second die rolls a one, but the first die rolls a two. Or if the first die is three and the second is one, and the first die is four and the second is one. All of these are also acceptable as long as one of the two die rolls a one. But if we get a three and a three, then neither die is a one. We're not interested in this outcome. If we get a four and a six, neither die is a one. We're not interested in this outcome. So we are interested in outcomes that are here or here. So let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are eleven possible outcomes out of a total of thirty-six outcomes. So, but what did we just do? We counted up these six outcomes right here. Okay? And then we added these six outcomes on the left column. But this guy right here, the event that we have two ones. He is double counted. He is in both the first row and in the left column. So we kind of have to remove him. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is going to be... Uh, we're looking at the probability that you land in the top row. That's 3 out of 36. Plus the probability that you land in the left column. That's also 6 out of 36. Minus the probability of this guy because we don't want to count him twice we counted him in the top row and we also count him, counted him in the left column so we're going to subtract him out his probability is 1 out of 36 we're subtracting him out because he was counted twice so that again suggests a general formula for the probability of A or B happening. And this sign is the union sign. The union sign. And the way I keep these straight in my mind is union is U, the union sign is shaped like a U, and it means one of the two happening, so you're bringing things together. Whereas the intersection sign, it means A and B, they both have to happen, and so it's kind of like, it kind of looks like an A right here. I don't know, this is just the way I think about union and intersection in my head, just to keep them straight. In any case, the names aren't terribly important right now, so we're going to have the probability of A, in other words, the probability that we're in the top row here, plus the probability of B, that is the probability that we're in the left column, minus the probability of A, and B, A intersection B. And we calculated that before, so that was probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A times B. And all I did right there was I took probability of A and B, that's the product of the two probabilities, and so there it is. So that's what we use if we want to calculate the probability that we're going to get a one in either of the two die. And this could be of great benefit to us if we're designing a game with any element of randomness to it, because we want to know what's the probability of any particular outcome of our random number generation. So now let's go to the code section we'll, where we will experimentally verify these results. Now here I have a little test bed where I'm going to execute one million trials by doing a for loop. 
And I'm going to roll a six-sided die. And we're going to test to see if that six-sided die equals zero. Why zero and not one? Well, remember, this will give me a result on the range of zero to five. I could say plus one and then put a one here. But, you know, I or I could just subtract one from both sides of this equation. Testing to see if it's equal to zero is really the same thing as testing to see if it's equal to uh, one after adding. Okay, so then I'm going to do it again. And what I want is if both of these dice rolls are equal to zero. Or in other words, if both die, roll a one. If that's true, then I'm going to increase the results counter by 1, and we're going to see how many positive results we got. We're going to divide it by the total number, of, total number of trials we did, which is a million, and we're going to compare that to our expected result of 1 divided by 36. Let's see how that does. Here we go. We got the experimental probability of snake eyes was 0.027659 and that's pretty close to the expected probability of 0.027778. Uh, actually this should be 0.027777 going on forever, infinite sevens, except that the, uh, the programming language I'm using, which is C, rounded it up to the last digit up to an eight. Good. Now let's see the probability of or. So what we want is the same thing as before. We're going to roll a six-sided die. We're going to see if it's equal to zero. And we're going to do it again. But this time, notice I've used a logical or operator instead of and. So now this will pass if either one of the two random generation events happens to be a zero. Same as before, we increase results by one. We divide that by trials. And we compare it to our expected result of 11 over 36. And let's see what happens. Okay, the experimental probability of rolling a 1 is going to be 0 0.305437. We see that's very close to within a thousandth of 3, 0.305556. And again, this should be 5 continuing forever, but uh, it got rounded. So good. Next week, we're going to look at how to calculate some probabilities when your events are not independent, when you have dependent events. And that's when things start getting really interesting. I'll see you next week.